Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. So, I get a lot of questions about this next one in the comments section, so I figured it'd be a good time to do an entire video on it. And that is how to properly set the mixture control screws on your electronically controlled Rochester Quadrajet or dual jet carburetor. And specifically, the questions usually revolve around the adjustment of the screws and then the air bleed valve and how you get it right. So in today's video, I'm gonna break everything down for you step by step. We're gonna knock it out and I'll show you how it's done and why you do it. So stay tuned, let's jump right in. All right, let's start the video by explaining some of the tools you're gonna to need to get this job done right. First, you're gonna need a dwell meter. I use the uh, Actron dwell meter set to the six cylinder scale. Yours will have to be set to the six cylinder scale, so keep that in mind. These are getting a little bit hard to find, but they are still available on eBay. So if you need to pick one up, you can find one there. Next, you're gonna need not one, but two of these flexible carburetor adjustment uh, tools. They come with a, a bunch of bits, which I have right here. Uh, we're gonna be using one bit, the double D bit, um, which is a bit that if you look at, it's flat on two sides and rounded on the top and bottom. Uh, the reason you need two of these is you have two screws and you wanna keep them in sync as best you can. And don't buy uh, some of the straight carburetor adjustment tools that you might find online. The reason for this is that you're gonna be doing this procedure with the air cleaner on. There's a lot of vacuum hose, tubing wires, and things like that that sometimes you need to snake around. That's why the flexible one works a lot better. Um, I've seen people try to do it with the straight ones and they wind up taking the air cleaner off. Now this causes the carburetor not to breathe right when you're doing the adjustment. So when you put the air cleaner back on and start heading down the road, it's already gonna be out of whack. So just keep that in mind. If you don't own one of these, you might think of picking up two of them. They're only about 10 or $11 each. Um, and lastly, we're gonna need a flat bladed screwdriver to adjust our idle air bleed valve. Those are all the tools you need, uh, but there's one thing that you will not need and you should not be using to adjust an electronically controlled quadrajet or dual jet carburetor, and that is a vacuum gauge. Uh, when they introduced these carburetors, they took the vacuum gauge out of all of the service manuals. Uh, you will not get a correct adjustment by doing it for vacuum. Those of you that have worked on mechanical carburetors know what I'm talking about. So get rid of this mechanical uh, vacuum gauge when you're doing a mechanical carburetor, you won't need it. Those are all the tools that you'll need to get a proper adjustment. Uh, we're gonna make several assumptions here and I'll get into those next. All right, now for the assumptions we're gonna make. In order to get a proper mixture adjustment to get the right dwell reading on your dwell meter and the smoothest idle possible, we're gonna assume that the rest of your carburetor has been adjusted properly and is in spec. That means your choke, your, your idle speed screws, your fast idle screws, everything are good. So if you haven't done that yet, you wanna go ahead and do that now. Also, this assumes that your TPS voltage is correct and your ECM is reading the correct TPS voltage that you should be getting at idle. In our case, this will be 0.41 volts, which I checked before I started making the video. Uh, if you haven't adjusted yours recently or you've changed out your throttle position sensor, I'm gonna include a link up top and in the description to a couple of videos where I talk more about that. Also, we need to assume that your mixture control solenoid is properly adjusted. Again, if you haven't done that already, you've rebuilt the carburetor or you don't really know what's going on there, it's been mess messed with by quite a few people over the years, then you're also going to want to take off your air horn and try to properly adjust that. Also, a uh, link in the description on how to do that. Uh, there's a couple videos in this carburetor series where I talk about getting those right. So assuming all that is correct, you have good TPS voltage, you know your mixture control solenoid is adjusted properly, we can go ahead and set things up 
and adjust our mixture screws. So here we have our carburetor. We've removed the air cleaner. I'm just gonna take one of these bits and pre-set it up in the mixture control slot. I find it's easier sometimes to use a set of needle nose pliers to get it in there because I don't really feel like taking off a lot of this vacuum brake hosing and things like that. So we'll get this one in there, make sure it's in there nice and tight and it's set on the screw itself. And we'll head around to the other side. I'm just going to disconnect our throttle position sensor and this vacuum hose here real quick so I can get access to the other mixture screw. And we're going to sit that one on the mixture screw as well and then reconnect our vacuum hose and our TPS connector. Now we'll feed our adjuster in there and get it on the bit and stage our second adjusting tool. All right, now that we have our adjusting tools in place, we're going to go ahead and hook up our dwell meter. And this is another question that I get a lot, and that is, where do you hook up your dwell meter? Well, the black connector will go to the negative terminal of your battery, easy enough. And the green connector, and it's usually like an alligator clip or something, will get attached to this green connector that comes off the wiring harness here. And I hope you can see it. This is your computer's dwell terminal. That's what this green connector is for if you've ever wondered. So you just wanna pop the alligator clip. I'm just gonna pull it out to make it easier. Over that metal tab inside. And you are all set. All right, so the reason we set everything up beforehand is because this adjustment needs to be done with the air cleaner on and the vehicle up to normal operating temperature and operating in closed loop mode. You can't hit the closed loop mode till your coolant temperature's all the way up. So it's easier to set things up ahead of time. This way you're not fumbling around with hot manifold parts and burning yourself and contorting your wrist, trying to get everything in there with the car running, you're just asking for trouble. So just set everything else beforehand. This way, once the car is nice and hot, you're ready to go. All right, next we're gonna pop our air cleaner on and we're gonna warm this guy up. Oh, one more thing before we warm everything up. Um, people have asked about the bench setting for these and the bench setting for the Quadrajet and Dual Jet doesn't matter what car line is all the same. Now, when I say bench setting, I mean you've just rebuilt your carburetor or your carburetor sounds or feels like it's really out of tune or really out of whack. And you want to get your idle screws to a setting beforehand so the car will at least idle. You'll be able to get it running and get it up to temperature and make the adjustment the proper way. Um, that setting is three and a half turns out. So what you want to do is turn both of your adjusters in until they bottom out. Don't tighten them. Just when you start to feel it uh, pressing against the carburetor itself, stop turning. Then you want to give them three and a half full turns out. That should get you a good enough mixture so the car will at least idle and you can use your dwell meter to put the finishing touches on things. I hope that one helps a lot of you guys. So let's get this guy warmed up. All right, so now that we've got the car warmed up, you can see our dwell is starting to vary according to our dwell meter. And you wanna be looking at the six cylinder scale, which is the bottom of the screen. You can see it's running a little higher than 30, but it's pretty close. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna adjust it a little bit until we get that 30 degree dwell that we're looking for. And then we're gonna go ahead and check the idle quality. All right, 
right, so I think this is as good as it's going to get. And you're never going to get it right because, like I said, the dwell varies back and forth as the computer makes adjustments to the carburetor. This is a system that works off averages. So as long as your average needle is pointing at the 30 degree mark, you are good to go. So now let's take a look at our idle quality. Hey, now I don't know if you could see it and try and put something on here to kind of show you what's going on. But you see how the screwdriver's moving back and forth and the air cleaner's kind of bouncing a little bit. That tells me that the idle's a little rough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slightly adjust our mixture screws again this time we're aiming to smooth out the idle without going too far off that 30 degree mark all right so i made a few more adjustments and i think now i've gotten the idle as close to where i want it to be now plus it's getting dark so i'm going to try and wrap this video up but now that I've got a nice smooth idle, I'll show you what the dwell meter looks like, but it's, it's still close to 30, um, maybe a little off. I had to go a little bit in one direction, um, but that's exactly how you want it to be. So now that we've gotten our mixture control screws adjusted the way we want them, we've got our idle as smooth as I think we're gonna get it tonight and we've got our dwell as close as possible to that 30 degree mark while keeping a nice smooth idle. The next step is to adjust our idle air bleed valve. And this is where things get a little creative because what we'll do is we'll remove the top of the air cleaner and slowly turn that idle air bleed valve in or out and that will change the dwell reading on our dwell meter and we could use it to get as close to 30 as we possibly can. But the good part is, unlike adjusting the mixture screws, adjusting the idle air bleed valve will not affect our idle quality or smoothness. So now what we'll do is we'll just give it a little tweak, maybe a 16th, an eighth, or a quarter of a turn in one direction or the other. Give it a good five to 10 seconds and you'll see it affect your dwell reading on your dwell meter. And then just play with it a little bit and try to get it back to 30 or as close to 30 as you can. The needle hitting 30 an average amount of times as it swings back and forth and we should be done. Took us a little too high. We're gonna go back the other way. Give it a few seconds to adjust. And then we'll put this back on. See what kind of reading we get. And adjust the other way a little bit. Just the 16th of a turn. Give it a few seconds to catch up. So I think at this point, I'm looking good. I got a fairly smooth idle. Got my dwell meter as close to 30 degrees as I could reasonably get it. And guys, keep in mind, this takes time. You might spend a good hour, two hours, sometimes three hours out here with the car trying to set things up, especially if you've never really done it before, or maybe you've rebuilt your carburetor, or you don't know what other people or prior owners have done to the car before you're actually sitting down and doing this right. So take some time with it, have fun with it. You can't really mess things up. Uh, you can always undo any changes that you make by just simply turning the screws of the idle air bleed back out or back in. So don't be afraid to mess with it and try and get it as perfect as you want it. So that's it. We've set everything the way we wanted it. And now I just have to clean up and put everything away. 
So I'd just like to ask you guys, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit that like button. It would really help me out. And if you're into carburetors, especially the electronic ones and 80s and 90s OBD1 cars and trucks, think about hitting that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that too. Guys, I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you learned something today. I'll see you on the next one.